Hello, I'm John Mathman. Hope you're all keeping well, it's keeping well clear of this deadly virus. It's now 80 odd days since the last at Beverage Park. The Pro 14 rugby season should be coming to an end now. The final, I think, was due to be played a week on Saturday. Everybody's missing rugby, but hopefully it won't be too long till we can all be playing again. Why I've been chosen to choose this team? My All Stars. I think because I've probably been along longer than most people. I first saw a game in Beverage Park as long ago as 1948. Remember it clearly. One of the first games of rugby I ever saw. And I also found out later on that Kirkcaldy had thrashed on the high. However, that's by the way. I joined the club in 1954 and have been part of it most years ever since. And my short and pretty undistinguished playing career came to an end in the 1960s. I was asked to join the selection committee, which was an important part of that club, of the club in those days. There was no coach then to pick us out. The only coach came to pick us up to take us to away games. League rugby started ten years or so after that in 1973. So I've seen a lot of Kirkcaldy players. And my last count. 393 players had worn the Blues jersey in a league game, of which there have been 726 since that first game on the 6th of October 1973 away to Mark, which incidentally we won 6-3. It's a long time ago. Anyway, all these players have turned out in the Blue jersey, and I've had a fairly tough job in picking what I think is the best team and along with um, eight replacements, or certainly no replacements, way back in the 1950s. Starting traditionally with the loose head prop. While I was still at school, Kirkcaldy came public attention locally anyway, um, with the selection of club captain of that time, Ian Kilgour, as travelling reserve for the Scottish side. There were no subs then, 15 players and a reserve travelled to away matches, and I suppose it was the same at home. Somebody took kill in the morning of the game, the reserve came in. Anyway, he's one of my loose head props. I'm going to list a number of players for each position, mentioning something about them, the year in which they played. In the 1960s, outstanding Kirkcaldy player in any position was David Seller. David started and ended his playing days at Kirkcaldy, ending them, incidentally, as standoff in seconds in the Zingari. David was a first-class athlete. I remember one seventh tournament in Dundee. He completely outpaced from one end of the park to the other. Chris Ray, Dundee High Centre, who within a couple of years was playing for the Lions in New Zealand. Mark Thompson, more recent times, has been mentioned in one of two of these selections. Terrific player. Great stalwart, number one jersey. Hookers, um, I haven't had many hookers over all these years. Um, Stuart Brown, uh, captain the side when we won the Shield at Murrayfield in 2002. Stuart was a great stalwart of what, probably the best front row combination we had, Willie Anderson, Stuart and Danny Harrington. Doug Wiley, um, captain the side when we went to Russia in 1990. That's, goodness knows that's 30 years ago now. Doug wasn't the heaviest player, but he was a busy player. Terrific throw in, throw it in at the line out. Uh, tight head. Probably didn't play all that many games for Goddy. My first year on the selection committee, he was a regular in the front row. There was no jersey numbers in those days. First player who got the, first, the best jersey, tight head Jake Ramsey. Jake was a Watsonian by origin, played a lot of his rugby for Watsonians, but also during his service days, played in the Bath first 15, then as now one of the top sides in England. Dave was a, um, Jake was a ferocious scrummager, would take on anybody. In his day, Dave Rollo was uh, regular on the Scottish side and Dave did not relish playing against Dave, um, Jake. Will Anderson was an outstanding prop. Started his days as a flanker. Remember Willie playing 
an outstanding partner, a winning Kirkcaldy, seven somewhere. Willie always had good ball skills allied to physical strength, which made him an actual prop. And he had quite a number of appearances from Scotland. And he also played for the full Scottish side in a World Cup qualifier, although caps weren't awarded for that game. One of my favourite players over the years around the turn of the century, the late Danny Harrington. Came to Dundee from Hillfoots, joined us where I think his spiritual rugby home was in Kirkcaldy, North of the Midlands, regular Caledonia. He was asked to join the Free World Cup training squad of 1995, but he had to earn a living in those days and couldn't make it. Another name probably forgotten now is Richard Higgins, a New Zealander from Wellington. He had a season with us before going to Melrose. He went to Melrose on the basis of a strong performance against Melrose. They liked the look of him and there he was, off. Three, three for tight head. Second row, first one I'll mention is Murray Douglas. Still playing, playing in a stew, I think, until the lockdown. Um, played in New Zealand in Scotland for Aberdeen Grammar and Harriet's and played in the Scottish Club International 15. He started his rugby as a wee blue. I never saw him play a league game, uh, but all reports he was, even at the age of 18, he was an outstanding performer. Alan Nisbet came to us from the Scythe. He was in the first 15 when he was 16, very tall, again athletic. Like great line-out man, good scrummager, and for a second row, he had a big boot on him. Current player, Connor Wood. When Connor wasn't playing last season, Kirkcaldy suffered. Good scrummager, good ball handler, and our main line-out man now for two or three years. His death was announced quite recently, Gordon Tyree. His first choice in the second row for the Cody for the best part of a decade before he left to work in Glasgow. Played for the West of Scotland for a year or two alongside Brunford Troon, another great figure in Scottish rugby. Gordon was a great Kirkcaldy stalwart. That's the selection for the second row. The back row, do number eight first. We in succession two terrific number eights. Um, Craig MacDonald, who came to first 15 when he was just 18 and played for a long time, well over a decade, followed very quickly by Craig Wilson, Chick. We were very lucky to have players of their calibre. Much earlier in the 1960s, there was Derwood Rankin, a dentist by profession. He was good enough to have been picked for North Midlands to play the All Blacks of 1964, but unfortunately, a few days before the game, he broke his wrist, which effectively ended his playing career. Um, flankers, any number of good players. One I've always liked, Andy Henderson, from the time I first saw him play for the under-16s. Captained the club, coached the club, coached the highest level, coached Melrose. Of course, now is director of rugby. At Strathallan, where he's produced quite a number of international players as coach there. Gordon Simpson, how many remember him? The Badger, came from New Zealand, came from Wellington, as did Higgins. He didn't play for very long, he went off to play for uh, Glasgow Hawks, then Glasgow Warriors. When Gordon played his first game for Scotland in 1998, um, he had Kirkcaldy after his name. Not many players have that distinction. Current, um, current players, Dale Turner. Always liked Dale. Great tie scorer, great supporter, good hands. Before him, 1990s, Gordon Hanna, who went on to greater things at Watsonians as a winger. All his rugby at Kirkcaldy was played on the flank. Um, again, a big try scorer. Another outstanding back row player, Jamie Syme.
we had a couple of years from him after he came from Alloa um, before he went to Heriot's. Stood out, never had a bad game. I like to put him in my short lead of back row players for consideration for my all-star team. Scrum half. In the 1960s there were all these arguments who was the best scrum half in the club. Players took turns. One I liked best players didn't like him all that much was Jimmy Reeve. said that Jimmy couldn't pass, but he was a ferocious tackler. He had a break, he'd go like the wind. Big try scorer. Standoff often complained about him. Not let him have the ball. Jimmy unfortunately passed away quite young when he was little more than 40. Richard Bethune went to school in Oxford came up to study in Edinburgh University and he was looking for a club to join in this part of the world. His family home was in Creef. When I was asked which club he should join, guess which one I suggested. He was an outstanding player, one of the best players to have worn the blue jersey over all these years. Standoff. We had great service from Keith Ferguson, a real tidy footballer. Superb kick. Sharp break. My vintage, going back to the 1950s, David Matheson learned his rugby in Kirkcaldy High School, went first 15 straight from school, played for North Midlands. He was a blue at Glasgow University before day at work in London. He was so good, he displaced the Scottish standoff of that he'd have gotten waddle. Waddle had to move to centre, Dave was at standoff. Unfortunately, his playing career ended when he had a bad accident at work. And number one, Quinny. In my book, maybe the best player ever to have played for Kirkcaldy. The centres, we've had quite a good number of excellent pairings this past season. Thomas Glenn Dinning and Josh Laird, as good a pairing as we've had since the probably days of Carruthers and Thompson in the centre. Earlier times, George Owens, again another Kirkcaldy player who played for the district. George was a bit injury prone, prone. but he had what was described in one press report. He, Owens had an atomic tackle. Uh, I don't think there's anybody who's played Kirkcaldy, Kirkcaldy before or since was able to tackle quite like George. Derek McComb, an Austin man, who played while he was at Kirkcaldy for Ireland under 20s. Previously, he played for the Irish, Irish school side alongside Brian O'Driscoll. That's quite a pedigree. He was with us for three years, I think, playing sometimes at fullback, sometimes at centre. Another terrific goal kicker. One game I remember at Selkirk, we were behind by five points. Selkirk gave away a penalty in the last minute and instead of going for touch he went for goal. I reckon there was still injury time. He kicked it from the 10 metre line. Selkirk in fringe at the restart got another penalty at the centre. Derek banged it over again. The ball was still rising and went over the bar with the narrowest of wins. Rob Dewey played for Scotland, I don't know how many times, but certainly in the 2007 World Cup. He was a Madras boy who came to us three seasons, another big try scorer. He went to Heriot's then, became a professional with Edinburgh. Last time I saw him, he was coaching Madras last season. He's still around a farmer somewhere up in East Newark. Chris Milne. We only had Chris for a season and a half, Dundee High School. I remember doing great damage to us playing for Dundee High. I don't know how we inveigled him away from uh, Mayfield. Chris now, I think, is a doctor somewhere in the west of Scotland. Terrific player. Wingers. Jock Mitchell, who could miss him out? Their top scorer. Jock the legend, the leg end as somebody said. Uh, big goal kicker again. You'd get them from any 
any angle. Yep. Dick Drummond was top winger in the 1960s. Dick was an all-round sportsman. He played hockey for Scottish schools. I don't get to play any hockey after he left school. And straight in the first 15, first game, he broke the collarbone of Ron Glasgow, who was flanker, the Scottish side at that time, Ron playing for Dunfermline. Dick was a fearful runner. He could run through people. Um, a lot of skill. Um, Dick stopped playing relatively young, but in his, at his best, he was a first-class player. You got anything else you want to say about anyone else? I'll try to answer. Anybody else come to mind? Steve McKenzie started off on the wing. He was Scottish hurdles champion when he was still at school. He was picked against the All Blacks in 1988-89. His later career he played at 10. A real heady player, as well as having that pace. So I'm considering Steve, like Steve, as a winger. Neil Renton captained the team for several years. Pace. Well, he scored three tries for North Midlands against Samoa at Perth. That persuaded Muir to go after him. They didn't stay long there, he came back and captained the team. Fullback. I have a big list here. Great stalwart of the club, terrific fullback, great in defence, maybe not the fastest player, but totally secure under a high ball. Tackle well. Dave Foster. Ian Barty started his days as a standoff when he joined the club in 1964. Ended up as a very, very competent fullback. How many remember Ben Price? He was only here for a year, St Andrews University student who continued his studies in Aberdeen and joined Aberdeen Grammar, played well for them for a year or two. Henry Murray, most of his rugby was played elsewhere, but his last couple of seasons were our number 15 jersey. Dunferman, player by origin, played for Scotland A and B when he was at Harriet's. Um, anybody else have missed out? Kurt Littlejohn, I always liked him, heavy tri-scorer in his years he was at fullback. But the one I liked best was a contemporary of mine, the late Eric Saunders. Eric, people at Kirkcaldy High School, joined the club from school. Uh, then, in his twenties, he went to Jordan Hill to study PE. While at Jordan Hill, he played centre for a couple of seasons for Glasgow. He started teaching in Edinburgh Academy, joining Edinburgh Aggies at that time. And he was picked to play for Edinburgh. He would have, he had to call off. He would have been the first person to have played for three Scottish districts. Eric Latterley was a professor of education. Not bad for somebody from Masserine Road. What Eric achieved, whatever Eric achieved himself, because he was off well known as the father of Rob Sanders, Ireland's captain in the 1991 World Cup. And more recently, Eric's grandson, Ryan Saunders, has been playing scrum half for Harlequins. Anyway, that's my selection for 1 to 15. I'm going to go over again. My number one is David Seller. Number two, Douglas Wiley. Three, Danny Harrington. Four, Alan Nisbet. Five, Connor Wood. Six, Stuart Price. Seven, Andy Henderson. Eight, Craig MacDonald. Uh, nine, Richard Bethune. Ten, Quinney. The centres. Derek McComb and Rob Dewey. Wingers, Steve McKenzie, Jock Mitchell, fullback, Eric Saunders. I've been told I can pick eight replacements. I think I've got eight here. Stuart Brown, Reserve Hooker. Props, Willie Anderson. Mark Thompson, covering the back row, Craig Wilson.
He also played second row from time to time. George Owens, Ian Bapti, and Neil Renton. That's my pick. Unfortunately, can't all play together, but there would have been some team if they had been able to play together. Look after yourself, folks. Keep watching. Coach! If a coach is to be picked, the outstanding Kirkcaldy coach over a long period of time, Terry Trawartha. TT joined the club, scrum half in 1970, snatched away as a former pupil at Bell Baxter from the Howe of Fife. He was actually picked for the Howe till he jumped in. Terry, Terry was around the club for just over 30 years, player and coaching the side on three different occasions all of which when we won promotion 4-3, 3-2 and 2-1 a great servant of the club